everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, so today I'm going to talk to you about hypothesis. Um, it would be great in the chat box if you let me know if you've heard of a hypothesis or if you've used it before, um, just to give me a feel for the room. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. And you should be seeing my Blackboard page on here. Um, so, you know, for those of you who are not as familiar um, with hypothesis, and I'm looking here in the chat box and I'm seeing that we, we have a mix of folks, um, it is a tool within Blackboard. And, um, you know, Hunter pays for it and provides it. It is not in all Blackboard platforms um, for those of you who teach at other institutions. Um, and, one of the reasons that I used um, or decided to use it last spring is because I was thinking through how can I get students to read within this online teaching context. Um, in my case, it was always a challenge to get students to complete the reading, um, to be honest with you, and to do it consistently, consistently throughout the semester. Um, and so I have built accountability into my in-person courses. Some of those included things like, you know, just doing a quick write at the beginning of class where I gave them a pretty open question about the reading, put a timer on for 10 minutes, and they wrote whatever they could. Um, Sometimes it was a quiz, an open-ended quiz, or even I would allow them to do an open note quiz, but not an open book um, quiz. And so, you know, when we were forced to move um, into online teaching, um, and particularly in terms of thinking about what we would do during our asynchronous time, um, and the course I'm going to share with you actually was a, a, a synchronous course where we met once a week and then the other day of the week they had asynchronous work. I wanted to think about how could I get them to do the reading, engage with it, and also engage with one another. Um, so I'm going to show you an example um, from one of my courses. And please excuse my Blackboard um, page right now. It's cluttered because it has like the new courses from next semester on here that I haven't decluttered yet or merged. Um, but I'm going to show you my language and ethnic identity course. And let me take this out of edit mode for a second here. And um, this is a course that is a 100 level course. Um, just to give you a little bit of context, um, it is a course where I have some majors. I'm in the Africana and Puerto Rican and Latino studies department. Um, but it's also, it, it, it is a course that fulfills um, general education requirements. So I actually get, it, 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 I tend to get students um, who are all sorts of majors or those who haven't even declared a major. Um, so I say this to you because I'm, I also think about, you know, how can I like develop conversations amongst these students um, who usually have not met one another, right? Which is very different from teaching students who are majors. Um, so let me show you what this looks like actually in Blackboard, I'm just pulling up one, one uh, a module from one week. Um, and so what I would do is, you know, my list of contents here, they would have the required reading. And um, I always put the PDF here for them to pull up. And I'll talk about this later. Part of this is, is dealing with glitches. I think one of the problems with using technology and Blackboard in particular is um, there are some issues that students can encounter. And I'll get to that at the end. Um, I also want to say this too, um, I am an avid user also of the discussion board, but I did want an alternative to doing that every single week um, and something a little bit more um, interactive in terms of what it looks like on the screen. Um, so here what you can see, and this is a mess because, or it's going to look a little bit messy to you because it has 59, 69 annotations on it. Um, this was a larger class of 40 students, um, and this is a reading that they actually um, heavily engaged in, and, and I felt like engaged in much more than when I have taught it in person. Um, and so what you do is you, you know, and I won't go into the logistics of this because a CERT um, does offer, um, you know, courses on this. Our Center for Online Teaching offers courses on this. I found out about Hypothesis actually through their boot camp um, that I took, I think, last June. Um, and then I took another course with Abigail Torres, who I think is on the line, who's very lovely, um, and gave me sort of the ins and outs of how to use this. So I won't get into this, but I just want to introduce it to you just so you can see like what the capabilities are. Um, so students, you know, read it through, um, you know, on, you know, their computer. Um, I've had students who've been able to use their tablets as well. Um, and the goal here um, is to get students to not only do the reading, but pull some of the reading, right? So pull like an excerpt, a quote from it, 
um, and provide some kind of annotation. Um, in my case, this was a very large class, so I had students only add, I, this was the beginning of class two annotations. I will be honest with you, by the end, I had them do just like one annotation because grading wise, um, it became quite a lot to get through. Um, and what the students can do is they can write out comments, right? So just, you know, pull up the text box and write in. Um, they could also add links um, to other articles, visual art, YouTube creations. Um, and I'm going to scroll down just so you can see, you know, some people, um, you know, just did text responses. Some people would link it to another video that was related. And of course, I would ask them to tell us, like, how do, how do you think um, this is relevant? Um, and sometimes when we would meet synchronously, I would go back to these and pull some of them up. Um, no matter what, what I would always do just to kind of bring this back together is after I read through all of them, um, I would actually do a takeaway. This was a longer takeaway because we had some terms that students weren't familiar with and had questions about. So I use this as an opportunity to just kind of get this in here. I also talked through this with them in class. Um, but I do this just because otherwise, um, you know, you have a lot of conversations that happen on here and sometimes some students don't know what to take, like to come away with in the class. Um, and this is something that, you know, I leave here for the whole semester so students can go back to it um, and look at it at some point later in the semester um, if they want to or need to at some point. Okay. Um, I want to show you i want to talk a little bit about um you know just i think for you know me this was an experiment in the spring i i have to be honest i didn't know how this was going to go um and i was very much accepting that this this may work it might not work um in terms of getting feedback from the students i am surprised that most of them really liked hypothesis um i will say that there was a learning curve for many of them um, because it was a tool that even though it was on Blackboard, um, they hadn't necessarily used in their courses before. Um, but also too, a number of them ran into issues, um, just technical issues. So for example, um, you know, you have to use like Mozilla Firefox. And so you have to tell students to do that. Otherwise, there are a number of glitches. Um, sometimes too, students have um, add-ons on their browsers that do not, uh, that interfere with hypothesis, um, especially when it's linked to like a web page. you have the choice of linking a PDF file. This one is a PDF file, but you also could link, um, you know, a website or, you know, an article that's, that's online. Um, and so what I did for those students is, and I'm going to go back here, is I always made sure, and we'll go back to that unit, um, I always made sure that there was a PDF of the reading here available for them to just click on um, here and it, in case they couldn't get into hypothesis. That way they still could engage with the reading. And then what I did was I went a little bit old school, right, um, using the student's language and went to the discussion board. And I always had a reading annotations fail safe for them because I say this to you because all of this technology is wonderful when it works, but when it doesn't, you will get zillions of emails from students who have like very high anxiety, right? Or trying to do complete the assignment on time. Um, and this is like a good way for them to just be able to, you know, get their post in here, um, post it in the discussion board, which I, which I usually don't experience any glitches with. Um, and at least they know it's there. They could always come back and repost it into Hypothesis later, or they can just leave it there. And I would always go in there anyway to, to grade and make sure that I didn't miss anyone's work. Um, so that's one of the things to think about. Um, the other, um, you know, I would say is um, you have to accept that the students may or may not complete the whole reading. Right, because they are engaging more deeply with an excerpt in there of their choice. Um, yes, I asked them to complete the, com the whole reading, but um, there's no way to, sh to really know if they've done that or not. Um, and, but I would say this, I mean, in my you know, in-person courses, I couldn't always ensure that either. Um, but that is something to, to think about. Um, and certainly like I had better success with the shorter the reading, right? The more likely it was that they would read it, the more accessible it was, the more likely they were able to read it in its entirety. Um, and so, you know, and the last thing I would say is, um, you know, if you're wanting to use Hypothesis, I would say go ahead and sign up for one of the workshops that the Center for Online Teaching offers. Um, I got a lot of help um, from Abigail Torres, um, uh, you know, who, who was at ASSERT, um, who helped me, um, you know, with a number of technical issues as I was learning how to use it. 
Um, but I also got help from Hypothesis, the company itself. Um, there was a representative who helped me work through some tech issues with students and they were really, really friendly um, and very, very helpful. Um, and, um, and had a lot of availability to meet with faculty. Um, so I found that that was really useful. 